I'm Robert Osborne. Up next on our look at the pioneering days of cinema, we have a very historic western from 1914, a movie called The Squaw Man. It's a landmark for many reasons. First and foremost, it's the first film directed by the iconic Cecil B. DeMille, the man who went on to be to Hollywood spectacles what Hitchcock was to the mystery genre, the master. DeMille's epics, including the silent screen version of The King of Kings and later biggies of the 30s, 40s, and 50s, such as The Sign of the Cross, Samson and Delilah, in both the 1923 and a 1956 version of The Ten Commandments. Well, this movie, The Squaw Man, also marks the first film released by the Jesse L. Lasky Feature Play Company, an organization that eventually merged with the Adolf Zucker Film Company to become Paramount Pictures, for years the most prominent movie studio in Hollywood. And to further illustrate how important this next movie is, as mentioned in the story of film, it's also considered to be the first feature-length film made in what was just a sleepy little farming community outside of Los Angeles known as Hollywood. Before DeMille made this movie there, several movie shorts had been filmed in Hollywood, but it wasn't until DeMille and his crew arrived with their cameras did anyone ever try to make a film there that ran longer than 10 or 20 minutes. The basis for this movie was a popular stage play of that era also titled The Squaw Man, about an English aristocrat he takes refuge in the American West when he's accused of a crime he didn't commit. It's a story DeMille liked so much, he made it again two more times. Another silent version four years later in 1918, then a sound version in 1931. But here's DeMille's first take on the story, the original 1914 version of The Squaw Man. 